Hello, hi, my name is Linda Jordan, and I am the owner of LRJ Coaching and Business Solutions, where I help women who are in corporate America or professionals who are having who have their own business. I help them maximize their money and jumpstart into their own financial freedom. So why do you think that I am capable of having this conversation with you? Well, I worked in corporate America for 27 and a half years, and I was at the point where I needed to make a change in my life. So to tell you a little bit about me first, um, I am a wife, a mother, and as I said, I worked in corporate America for 27 and a half years. And so through that time, I learned that I needed to make a change in my life. I needed to do something differently. And so I started my own business after going through probably three plus mergers and five plus reorganizations. I knew that I needed to make a change. I knew that I needed to do something different in my life so that I had control of my financial freedom and so that I could also create a legacy for my family. So I started my business, LRJ Coaching and Business Solutions. And to give you a little bit more about me, um, while I worked in corporate America, I did a variety of different types of positions or held different positions from finance to sales operations to um, communications, um, outsourcing, as well as um, uh, making changes within the organization from a contact center basis. So that allowed me the privilege to um, get a better understanding of how you run a business. And so what I would say to you, for those who are ready to make a change in your life and for those who are ready to start your own business, take advantage of you know, the company that provides you additional training so that you can be prepared to be your own boss. So the three things that I wanna share with you today are three simple tips that I used and I think that will be helpful for you when you're ready to boss up and take charge of your life. So the first one is around having the right mindset and a positive attitude. So you're probably thinking, well, yes, I have the right mindset and my attitude is typically positive. However, we have to make sure that our mindset is really focused on being a boss and it's focused on doing what's best for you. So with a positive attitude, it's by choice. You know, we wake up in the morning and we decide what type of attitude we're going to have. When I wake up in the morning, I decide and I know that I'm responsible for my destiny. I'm responsible for the decisions that I make. So I have to have a positive attitude. You know, the old phrase is, how do you turn lemons into lemonade? Well, we're all going to be faced with challenges. So when you're faced with those challenges, make sure that your attitude is ready to handle those. You don't want to have the attitude to that, you know, I'm stuck or you feel stuck and you can't get things done. So making sure that you have a positive attitude and your attitude also is what helps you get along with others. So again, having the right mindset, keeping a positive attitude and get the training that you need if you're still in corporate, get the proper training to help you prepare for that next phase of life. See, when I was in corporate America, I um, was faced with a lot of challenges, and um, oftentimes I had to do tasks that I just really didn't want to do. So for me, I really had to think about, you know, what's the best approach to take? And so when you're having to make those types of decisions, it makes a difference for you when you're faced with challenges. So always having a positive attitude, doing what's right, and doing what's best for you will help you in the long run. The second piece is around um, being consistent, being disciplined, and being committed. And that's when you're looking at, you know, what is your next phase of life? So let me back up a step and say, before you get to that point, making sure that you're setting goals for yourself. So we all know about the SMART goals. And you don't want to just have SMART goals, but you want to think big. So having those SMART goals are great, but you really want to think big. What are your top five goals, let's say for 2021, but also what are your top five goals for the next three years, the next five years, the next 10 years? What are those top five goals? And then you want to think about why are these goals important? 
what made you want to focus on these particular five goals? So for me, when I was in corporate America, you know, I was, after I went through that struggle of reorganization, downsizing, and surviving most of those, I quickly realized that I needed to do something differently. So I started writing down my goals. But I wanted to make sure that I wrote down goals that were achievable because I wanted to prepare myself just in case the next reorganization or the next downsizing was something that was going to impact me. So I needed to have a plan in place so that I could maximize on that. So making sure that you have specific goals, but most importantly, you want to make sure that you have goals that are time bound. What do I mean by that? So if I say that I want to do, you know, X goal, there's a time frame that goes with that. So by quarter one, I want to make sure that I achieve this. By quarter two, that's your next goal, quarter three and quarter four. So for each goal, you want to be very specific. You want to be able to measure that goal and you want to make sure that it's attainable, but you also want to make sure that you can achieve that in the time period that you want. We all have to be realistic when, to, when it comes to setting goals. And you want to make sure that you have an exit strategy when you're setting these goals as well. So for me, in order for, for me to keep up with how am I doing on my goals, and one of the tips that I think would be helpful for you is write down your goals, share them with other people, share them with friends and family, share them with like-minded individuals. For me, I write down my goals and I put it on a vision board and I look at it every day because I want to remind myself of what is it is that I need to do. I want to remind myself of things that I need to accomplish. And I want to remind myself of where is it that I want to be at the end of the day, at the end of the day. I want to remind myself of that constantly. So create whatever that's going to work best for you. If it's a vision board, if it's just a sticky on the refrigerator, make sure that you post it so it's in a location and a place that you can see all the time and remind yourself of what's really important. Again, making sure that's realistic. Think big. Just don't think small of, well, I'm going to get one item done for this year. No, you want to have at least five goals for a one year, a three year, a five or a 10 year time period. So remember to think big when it comes to your, what I call um, big, hairy, audacious goals. You really want to think big. So as a recap, the first one is have the right mindset, keep a positive attitude, and make sure you're getting the proper training that you need. Remember, you want to be able to turn lemons into lemonade. Um, so to, to give an example, um, for me, turning lemons into lemonade was I was tasked in, when I was in corporate America, tasked with a project that I had to do. And I had no idea what is it that I needed to do around creating a contact center in the U.S. and transitioning it out of the country into uh, Malaysia. So I was tasked with this goal. So what, what my goal was to, you know, work on a project. So that was my goal, but I had no idea of what was all involved in that. So I allowed fear to sort of kind of take over a little bit and paralyze me for a moment because I, I really wasn't sure what I needed to do. So we have to remind ourselves that, you know, having that positive attitude, turning lemons into lemonade, but most importantly, overcoming that fear of failure. Overcoming the fear of failure is one of those things that um, can haunt us, but we also need to remind ourselves that is it really fear of failure or is it more fear of success? When it comes to being your own boss and stepping out and gaining financial freedom, we all know that, you know, oftentimes we may have some failures in life. Um, but most importantly, it's more of that fear of success. You know, what happens when you're successful? So sometimes we allow that fear to seep in and kind of take over. But going back to making sure you have that positive attitude, that can-do attitude, that positive mindset of knowing that you can get it done, then that fear of success, fear of failure, sorry, turns into that fear of success. And then once you have that fear of success and you've accomplished success, you can do anything. So don't allow the fear of failure to kind of take over, you know, what you really want to do. And the third um, part that I want to share with you is being consistent, 
being disciplined and being committed to whatever it is that you want to do. Why do you ask? Well, did you know that in 2021, the economists have indicated that over 2 million women will be out of the corporate world or will be out of the workforce. They will be lost in the workforce, over 2 million women. And did you also know that in 2021, the workforce will be shrinking? See, COVID has made a lot of changes for all of us. And in the workforce world, most people are working from home. That means that industry does not need a brick and mortar anymore. And so changes have occurred drastically in the short period of time. But most importantly for women, as I said, 2 million women will be lost in the workforce. So the time is now for you to start thinking about your financial freedom. The time is now for you to start thinking about what is it that you need to do differently so that you are not a statistic. So having the right mindset, having a positive attitude, writing down your goals now will help you prepare for what it is that we see coming in the future. Know that 2021 is just a few days away. It's just a few days away. So we have time right now for us to get ourselves in order, to start making plans, because you don't want to be a statistic of this 2 million women lost in the workforce in 2021. You don't want to be a statistic in the workforce of being lost in 2021. So be consistent in whatever it is that you do. Be consistent in discipline and be committed to your plan, committed to making those goals, committed to taking charge of your life. Because commitment does a couple of things for us. First of all, commitment can change your life. Think about it this way. All the sports athletes, they practice constantly. That's all they do is they practice, practice, practice. And they are so good at what they do. And they make a lot of money at what they do. And that's because they're disciplined. That's because they're consistent. And they are committed to being the best that they can be in whatever sport that they're doing. So as an entrepreneur, as a woman in business, as a female, we need to take those same behaviors and become consistent, disciplined, and committed so that we can be the best that we can be. Secondly, commitment help us, helps us overcome challenges in our life. You know, uh, being an entrepreneur, um, there are always challenges that we face, challenges around, you know, finding the right, you know, for me, I, I do a couple of different things, but finding the right employees, uh, making sure that there's um, revenue um, that's coming in. So, you know, sometimes you may need to find money for whatever project that you're working on. So there's all types of challenges that you may face. Um, even in the corporate world, there's challenges. If you're trying to get a promotion, there's a challenge because they may say you're not qualified for a particular job. So there's challenges in all that we do in our entire lives. But when we're committed to a task that we have, or we're committed to a goal that we have, it helps us overcome those challenges in our life. See, every day there's a challenge and you have to be committed and we will be tested every day. Every day that you wake up, you'll be tested on something. Whether it's a challenge or it's a task or it's your faith, we'll be tested every single day. But if we're committed to what is it that we're doing, we're committed to our mission, we can overcome those challenges. Being consistent, yeah, there are a couple of things that you know, we need to focus on when we're being consistent. Most importantly, we need to be patient. Um, you know, sometimes when you're, you're faced with a challenge or you're, you're working on something and you want to get it done like tomorrow and you want those results to show up tomorrow, but we have to be patient because you don't want to make a mistake along the way. So when there's consistency, we have to learn to be patient. Also, when we're being consistent in a process or whatever is that we're doing or trying to achieve our goals, there's value in the process. 
So we need to take time to absorb all the changes. We need to take time to understand all the new processes that are faced, that we are faced with. So there's value in understanding the processes, whether it's in the corporate world or if it's in the entrepreneurial world. There are val there's value in those processes. So make sure that you're consistent, being patient in your consistency, and understanding the values that are presented before you. Most importantly, when you're starting off with goals and you're starting off with, you know, trying to make sure you're being diligent and consistent and committed, start small. Don't start with large tasks because that can be somewhat overwhelming. So you want to make sure that you start small and make sure that you're able to achieve these goals and objectives within a time period. So remember I said, figure out what are your top five goals. Understand why they're important to you. Understand why they're important to you. But also, what do you need to do differently to make sure that you can achieve these goals? Is it changing your behavior? Is it getting more education? What is it? You want to make sure that you are able to achieve these goals. So remember the top five. Why are they important to you? And then what is it that you need to do differently so that you can achieve these goals? So to recap on what I've covered so far, there are three simple things that you can do to boss up and take charge of your financial freedom. Number one is have the right mindset and keep a positive attitude. Have the right mindset and keep a positive attitude. Because if you go into um, 2021 with the attitude of, oh my gosh, it's COVID and we've got to stay at home and you know, you got to wear a mask and you feel like you can't get done what you need to get done, then you won't be successful. So going into whatever it is with a positive attitude, your outcome will also be the same. And it will be a positive attitude. I've had to make a lot of changes in my business um, because of COVID. And I can honestly say that, you know, I think I'm on the upside as opposed to being on the downside. Um, Yes, it is a change for all of us. Yes, it is something different. Yes, we had to pivot and come up with a new strategy, a new way of doing things, but it has been very rewarding. It has taken me to a different place that I wouldn't have gone before. You know, you have to become uncomfortable being uncomfortable. And I've accepted that and it has worked out extremely well for me. So secondly, you know, know what you want. Set goals for yourself. Think big. Write down your goals. Be realistic in whatever it is that you want to do. And make sure that you have an exit strategy in place and the goals that you have listed. And then the third point was to be consistent. Be disciplined. Be committed to whatever it is that you want to do. Understand what is your why. We all have to know what our why is. So before you even think about writing your goals, you have to make sure you know what your why is. And when I was in corporate America, my why was number one, was to get out of it and be my own boss. But I had to really dig deep and figure out truly what that why is. And that why was to have financial freedom. That why also included, I wanted to leave a legacy for my daughter. I wanted to make sure that, you know, when my life is over, she will be able to carry on. And that's what we really have to think about. We really have to dig deep and figure out what is that why? What gets you going every single day? And for me, it's making sure I leave a legacy for my daughter. I have financial freedom. I can do the things that I want to do, spend the time that I want to spend with my friends and family, travel where I want to travel once COVID's over. Um, but, you know, that's really what, what we all want in life is to have the ability to do what we want and be happy doing it, be financially free, be debt free. And so if I've said anything today that resonates with you, I extend the offer to only 20 spots that I have available for a free 30 minute consultation on the jumpstart to financial freedom. So for the woman on fire attendees, there's a 10% offer on the three month package. And there's a 15% offer on the six month package. 
And so if you go to www.talkwithcoachlinda.com, um, set up some time with me and we'll talk about uh, which package is best for you. The three month package is 10% off for today. It's normally $15.97, but for the Women on Fire conference, it is $14.97. And for the six month, it's 15% off. It's normally $33.97, but for the Women on Fire conference, it's $33.97. So go to, again, go to www.talkwithcoachlinda.com to schedule your free 30-minute jumpstart session so that we can discuss the best financial freedom package for you. My goal is to make sure that I can help every woman in the world understand and know that a nine to five is not always for you. So how do you get out of that rat race? How do you get out of that nine to five grind? You don't wanna live paycheck to paycheck. And not saying that some of you do, but if you are in that situation and you want to be able to leave a legacy for your family, connect with me at www.talkwithcoachlinda.com and let's talk about how to help you get out of that rat race and start your journey to financial freedom. Thank you.